Sonic, the heart of your system. What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video and Z490 is nearly here. And today we'll be taking a look at the Z490 Velocitor. Yes, this is a new board from ASRock. Now I don't have a CPU yet and this first embargo date is only for uh, listing motherboard specs, uh, showcasing videos, doing unboxing and photos. The actual performance embargo for these boards and the CPU are still a few weeks away so I can only just cover an unboxing and an overview on the board so let's jump in and check it out. With Z490 we see ASRock introduce a new board named Velocita which is Italian for speedy and sits under the Phantom Gaming lineup. The Velocita is a mid to high end board similar to the PGX or PG7 we've seen in the past. I've been told pricing wise we should see this board cheaper than the Tai Chi. Unfortunately, I do not have a supported CPU, so I can't do any testing, and besides, the first embargo date is only for showcasing specs and board information. The Velocitor is packaged in what you would normally find from ASRock. No fancy opening door like seen on ASRock's higher end boards, so something is telling me there's more to come. And on the back is what you'd also expect to see, and the first thing I saw was a PCIe 4.0 listing and also VRM cooling fans. I'll cover more on that later. Inside the box we find four basic SATA cables, with two being right angled at one end. We also find M.2 screws, a driver CD and case badge, motherboard manual, software setup guide, and lastly an envelope containing some Velcro cable ties and also sticker cable labels, which we've seen before, but this is a first from ASRock. Under all that is the motherboard itself inside an anti-static bag. Taking a closer look at the board, we see a slight resemblance to the Z390 Phantom Gaming 7, which ASRock released mid last year. I find the design pleasing and nothing over the top, although the red aesthetics might be a turn off for some, but once in a case, it's much harder to see. The first thing that stood out on this board for me was the power and cooling. I don't think I've ever seen dual A-pin EPS power on a Z series board from ASRock. Three cooling fans can also be found, two in the top VRM heatsink, and one in the left VRM heatsink under the I.O. cover. Unfortunately, I am unable to test the noise levels of these fans. I even forced the board on without a CPU and they did not spin. Looks like I'll have to wait for a CPU for this testing. Moving on to the VRM heatsinks and kudos to ASRock for finally adding a thin array heatsink design. Other brands have brought back this design for quite a while now and I'm glad ASRock have now too. It will be interesting to see how this heatsink fan combo stacks up, first having larger passively cooled heatsinks. As long as the fans aren't roaring like a jet engine, I've always preferred having VRM fans. A 12 phase power design can be found with 60 amp chokes and an ISL 69269 PWM. Previous Intel CPUs like the 9900K are not supported in this socket 1200, but previous Intel supported coolers will fit fine. Moving on to what we've been waiting for and that is PCIe Gen 4 support. On this board, and I feel this will be similar to other boards, we find PCIe Gen 4 support on the first 16 PCIe slot only and on one of the M.2 slots. Now this M.2 layout is kind of confusing and one of the most interesting I've seen on a board to date. M.2 1 being Gen 4 and M.2 2 being Gen 3 face each other. This means straight away you cannot use both at once. As M.2 1 states, it is supported with future generation processors and not supported with the CPUs released at launch. So you'll be using the next slot M.2 2 to the right. This is something I'd like to confirm once I have a CPU, but the manual states M.2 1 is a Gen 4 slot only. A third M.2 slot can be found lower down on its own, and M.2.2 and M.2.3 support both PCIe and SATA M.2 SSDs, but keep in mind some SATA ports are disabled when using these M.2 slots. No Wi-Fi is included on the Velocitor, but there's a dedicated M.2 Wi-Fi slot, so it's really down to you if you want to add, say, a $50 AX Wi-Fi adapter. The appropriate antenna cutouts are found in the built-in I.O. shield. Motherboard RGB is implemented in a few places, an ASRock logo over the I.O. cover which shines down over the left VRM heatsink, and the PG logo on the chipset heatsink is also RGB. Four RGB headers are located around the board, two 12V 4-pin standard RGB, one at the bottom and one at the top right, while two 5V addressable 3-pin headers, one at the bottom and one near the 24-pin can be found. Moving to the right of the board we find six Intel SATA ports supporting RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10, and two more SATA ports running off an ASMedia ASM1061 controller. Two internal USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers running off an ASMedia ASM1074 hub can be found providing four Type-A front USB ports, while a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header running off the Z490 chipset can be found for that front Type-C port. 
7 fan headers are dotted around the board with all supporting the water pump feature. Moving on to the rear we once again find Azeroth's flexible IO shield which is found on most of their mid to high end boards these days. DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 1.4 ports are located at the top of the rear IO. Both support up to true 4K resolutions, 60Hz for the DisplayPort and 30Hz for the HDMI at that res. 6 USB ports can be found on the rear, 4 3.2 Type-A Gen 1 ports, 1 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and 1 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. Networking wise there's a standard Intel i219V Gigabit Ethernet adapter and also a 2.5 Gigabit Realtek Dragon adapter as well. Lastly we have the standard audio ports running off a Realtek ALC 1220 codec. Now there's just one last thing I wanted to cover on this board which I did find quite interesting. You might have seen this when I showed the back of the product box earlier in this video that Azrock do recommend using CPU water cooling on this board. Now I'm not sure if it's just this Z490 board or more from Azrock, but I do have a feeling it's probably because of the VRM heatsink setup. The fact that there are three fans uh, set up in a way to cool this VRM and they do state there are, are certain CPU coolers as in air coolers that aren't compatible with this board. Now in saying aren't compatible to me, I don't really see too much of an issue on fitting coolers on this board. As you can see, these VRMs aren't huge. They're not like on some of the other brands where they take up most of the board. I think they're strictly talking about airflow. Like if you have a large uh, air cooler on here, it may disrupt the air cooling that is dedicated on these VRMs. Because as you saw earlier, there are the two fans on this top VRM heatsink. And then there is the fan in the side one over here. So to be honest, um, for me, I don't think that would affect it too much. If you had a big uh, CPU cooler on here blowing air over, I don't see that too much of a problem, but who knows, Z490 might be different. These new high-end CPUs might need every little bit of VRM cooling we can get. So I guess only time will tell for that. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's it on this video. Just a quick unboxing showcasing this board. As I said earlier, this should retail cheaper than the Tai Chi, which is quite inter interesting because I think this board um, has been fairly well made, it's good quality, it's got some decent VRM cooling. I wouldn't say it's got the highest VRMs I've seen from ASRock, so it's kind of showing me that there may be more to come from ASRock, probably with a 14, maybe a 16 phase VRM. So uh, probably next video, if I do get a CPU, I may not cover this board again, which I did mention I would in this video. I might move over to like the Tai Chi. Um, if it does have similar features, I'll cover the Tai Chi because there's no point doing this one again, but I'll definitely cover the uh, Tai Chi with the uh, the CPU I get, and I may jump back to this board. If the Tai Chi has a different VRM cooling system, I will jump back to this board because I definitely want to see how this VRM cooling system works with the three fans, as opposed to something more passively cooled. But that's it. I want to thank Azrock for sending this out. I want to thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for next time.